Welcome back, folks. In this lesson, we want to take a look at something called pseudo. Now, there's a good chance that you're already somewhat familiar with pseudo. There's also a good chance that you're already using it. But there's a lot to pseudo. So there's also a good chance that there's a lot about it that you don't know. So why pseudo? Well, I don't know about you, but when I go to a website and I see a Linux tutorial where the person who's doing the demonstration is logged in as the root user, that just drives me crazy. Now, remember what we said before about how Linux is better at separating administrative accounts from normal user accounts than what Windows is. And that's one of the things that makes Linux more secure than what Windows is. But if we're going to log in as the root user all the time, that just completely negates that advantage. Yeah, sure, it's a handy and easy way to perform administrative tasks, but it's also a handy and easy way for bad people to exploit your system. Most Linux malware requires the attacker to gain root privileges in order to install it. So if we're logging into our system as the root user all the time, then that is just going to make it easier for the attackers. Now, yeah, I did say that logging in as the root user is a handy and easy way to perform administrative tasks, but that's really only true if you only have maybe one or two machines, maybe just a couple of people taking care of those machines. But if you are in a large enterprise and you have like hundreds or thousands of machines to have to take care of, and you have a whole bunch of different administrators to have to help take care of those servers, then having to log in as the root user all the time is going to make a nightmare because the only way that you can facilitate this is to give the root password to all of the administrators. So then what happens when one of those people leave the company? Well, in order to cut off that person's access, you got to change the root password and then give that new root password out to everybody else. Also, when users log in as the root user, there's no accountability because the system logs are going to show that the person logged in as root and they'll also show when the person logged out from the root account, but they won't show the tasks that the person performed while logged in as root. So you can see in this entry from this var log secure file of a CentOS 7 machine where user Donnie, hey, that's me, logged in as a root user at time 945 and then logged out from the root account at time 1143. But it doesn't show anything that happened between the login and the logout. And finally, by just letting people log in as a root user all the time, there's no way to control their level of access. So by logging in as a root user, you're going to give everything to everybody. So whoever logs in as root can do everything on the system and can access everything. So there's no real control over what the people can do. So this violates the principles of least privilege and separation of duties. So the principle of least privilege says don't give more privileges to anybody than what they absolutely need to do their job. And separation of duties means to just let certain people do certain specific tasks and not let them be able to do everything. Following these two principles will greatly enhance the security of your enterprise. So we need to have a way to delegate certain administrative privileges to certain people. And we want people to use their own passwords instead of the root password. And we also need a way to maintain accountability for what people do with those administrative privileges. With sudo, we can do all of these things. And as an added benefit, sudo can be used on Linux, Unix, and BSD operating systems. So if you are in a large enterprise with a mixed environment of different types of Unix servers, BSD servers, Linux servers, you can create a pseudo policy on one machine 
and you can deploy that policy to all the other machines on the network and it doesn't even matter if you create the policy on a Linux machine and deploy it out to Unix and BSD servers. If you have the policies written correctly so that they're compatible with all those different operating systems, then it's going to work for you. And you can deploy the pseudo policy across the entire enterprise by a number of different methods. You don't have to run around to each one of the individual servers and manually install the policy file. In instead, you can use something like Puppet, Chef, or Ansible to automatically distribute the file to all the other servers, or you can maintain a pseudo policy in a central location on an LDAP server, or the easiest way of all is to centrally maintain your pseudo policies on a free IPA server. Now, that last one though, the only downside to that is that free IPA currently only works on Linux and currently it's only fully implemented for Red Hat servers. It's not fully implemented for any other Linux distro even. But if you're in a mixed environment with Linux, Unix, BSD servers, then those first two options are certainly good ones for you. Sudo also provides accountability, and that just means that everything that users do with sudo will get logged. So you can see down here at the bottom at the screenshot in our secure log file about how user Donnie logged in with just his normal user account, and you can see all the things there that I did with my sudo privileges. Now, that kind of works both ways there. Yes, it is a good way to verify if somebody is doing something wrong, and it can be used for criminal prosecution. It can be used for grounds for disciplining a person, but it can also provide protection for users who are completely innocent of any wrongdoing. So if something happens, and you know that you did not do it, well, you would be able to prove that with the log files. So sudo will allow people to perform only specific administrative tasks or a specific group of administrative tasks. And you can do this by assigning privileges to a Unix group, to a user alias, or to individual users. And we can also specify the host on which people are allowed to perform their administrative tasks. And this we want to do because if we're deploying a pseudo policy across the entire enterprise, then we want something in there to be able to tell sudo that yes, this person is authorized to perform this task on this machine. And we will specify that either by specifying individual hosts in the policy or by adding hosts to a some sort of a single purpose host alias. So for example, if we have a group of web servers, we can create a host alias for those web servers. And this pretty much does it for the why of sudo. In the next presentation, we're going to look at the how of doing sudo. So thank you for watching.